Um, hello and uh, today I want to show what we can do with the point workbench and uh, uh, I also will sh demonstrate some functions um, which can be used to extend the functionality of uh, the point workbench. Uh, first thing when I have an object like this one here I can transform the data to a point cloud. There is a method convert to points and here I set the distance between the points, the density of the points. So and after short time I have a point cloud for this part. And now what can I do? First thing what I can do with the point cloud library is I can draw here a polygon and at the end I can cut here some of the points. So other thing is uh, if I have a cube then the question is which of the points are inside of this cube. So I select this one and here is a list of new methods I have written uh, yesterday and today and uh, I will put them into uh, an extension of the points workbench. Um, it's first a prototype. So uh, I have selected these two objects and now I can ask the question the points in uh, outside the bound box. So and now I see here this is exactly the set of points outside. And I can do the same again and can ask what are the points inside the bound box. So I have uh, split my point cloud into two sets. Other thing what I can do is I can use the points and make a projection onto the XY plane. And I can do the same to the XZ and to the YZ plane. And so I have three planar models of my point cloud for post-processing. Okay, next step. Uh, I load points from an object file. This is format for mesh. And I only want to read the points. At the moment it's still hard coded. I load this torso and I call this point set torso. So Okay, here is the center of the world and sometimes it's good to have uh, the object, the torso, here on this place. So I can first use the method center the points and in this case my point cloud is exactly on the center. The center of all point coordinates is the origin of my space. So, and now I can delete these old point sets. <coughs> so the next thing what I can do, I can use this object and place it uh, in a good po position. I can first Rotate it this way, apply, and then OK. Next step is I <coughs> rotate. Oh.
So, okay. Uh, now I have centered the torso and uh, we have here really complex coordinates. And now I can apply and reset the placement. So I get a new object in the same position, but where the placement is reset to zero. And this is my second torso. Okay, the next thing what I do is I uh, now reduce the number of points. Simple case is uh, I reduce it with, oh, I have to select it. I reduce it with uh, size 30. This one and I uh, also can do it with and with 15. So, and final two, but uh, in this case, if I reduce this uh, with uh, factor 10, then I will get more than 6,000 points. And this is a little bit too much for my computer. Okay, I hide this one and these ones and so now I work with this model and what I the next step what I do I calculate the extreme points the points with maximum Z coordinate lie here and I also can compute the points which lie on the other opposite side with minimum Z. That's not so interesting for these torsos so I demonstrate the functionality uh, for the maximum of X. Here and the minimum of x. This will be the points here. So when we look from here onto the torso, we see it in one direction and in the other direction. Okay, then if we have calculated the extreme points, the points uh, with Z max coordinates, we can use this point set to get the interpolation. And now there are three interpolation methods. The first is uh, calculate a linear grid. The second calculates a cubic grid. Oh, I have to select the point cloud. And the last is a uh, thin plate interpolation. So we can look at these models. And we see uh, there are only very small differences. We have to zoom in. And you see here these small differences between the interpolation methods. And we can go back to our torso, our model, to see where the points were located. Okay, uh, now I will repeat the same 
for the factor of 15 torso this one oh. I hide this grids this is the torso with factor of 15 and first I have to calculate Z max points and in this case uh, the calculation will take uh, nearly one minute so I made a short break here we have the new data set and with this one again I start the interpolation I stop the recording so we are back again we s see here uh, the calculation time this was the calculation time for a z max function this is uh, half of a minute and here we have the peak for the interpolation it's nearly one minute and I start the next interpolation for the cubic model so the cubic uh, grid is done and the last dance is the thin plate calculation so it's done let's see the workload here is the linear model here this is the cubic model and this is the thin plate model all processes uh, uh, needed uh, about a minute to calculate it so what's the result we see here our three models with the fine grid and once more I can display the grid uh, for the other um, data set so if we zoom in we can see sometimes some differences but what we see is here the same as for the first test the three interpolation methods do not differ essentially the results are nearly the same so the grid which is calculated here can now be used to create NURBS interfaces on it